So we don't necessarily always want this inflammatory response, this immune response to be on. We want to have the balance. We want to have responses when we need it. But generally, when we're we're not fighting an infection, we want the immune system to be off. We want calm and quiescent immune cells that are not spitting out inflammation. So the boosting part just doesn't make sense. Your, jump, your body is jumping on everything yeah. when actually it could have just let it slide by and instead yeah. it's triggering all of these like exactly. very strong responses. Yeah. When actually you're saying for many of us it would be better if our immune system was a bit more relaxed, not yeah. like more on. Exactly. Because I think there's so many things that trigger unnecessary inflammation. You know, stress, poor diet, lack of exercise, like pollution, like the list is endless. And actually we want to be turning that off as much as possible. So boosting, it's like, which bit are you boosting for how long, for how much? Like, Because the immune system is this huge constellation of a million different types of cells and, and molecules. So it, it, to, to um, shrink it down to an on-off switch, to me, it's like, it doesn't make sense. And I think it's just what I call immune washing. So people are... <laughs> taking advantage in terms of marketing terms, you know, because people are scared. You don't want to get sick. You want to get through winter without having to take time off work. And there might be something that contains a certain amount of vitamin C, which means they can use that immune boosting uh, wording on their packaging. But it's not going to make you invincible. To Could we talk directly about that? <laughs> yeah. So if I take vitamin C, is it going to make my immune system better and mean that I am going to be sick? less? I would love to say yes, but if you have a really good diet, I would definitely save your money. There is some evidence that if you, perhaps you do a lot of running or a lot of sports uh, and you're under a lot of stress, and in those cases, you might need a little bit more than you're getting from your diet, and that might prevent incidents of illness, but we're talking really small. And there's some evidence that when you start getting those symptoms, you think, oh, I've got a bit of a tickle in my throat or I feel a bit, you know, fluey today, that your um, immune cells suddenly need so much more vitamin C. And if you start supplementing at the onset of symptoms, you might reduce the duration of the infection. And that's because vitamin C acts as an antioxidant. And because inflammation is basically a big oxidative stress, so it's full of free radicals, it's damaging your own tissues, your immune system is like, I need way more vitamin C right now because it's a great antioxidant. But, you know, I, I think the evidence is so small. Maybe keep it in your cupboard, you know, and in winter, you know, it's something you could start taking if you fall sick. <laughs> You're saying this, but I'm looking at you and you don't look like you believe that I should be taking vitamin C. There is evidence there, but to me, I think the rest is probably a better way to, you know, that's where I'd put my money. Have an afternoon on the sofa, don't go into work, get some proper rest, you know, eat some really nourishing food, like delicious soup that's packed with, you know, um, lots of lovely vegetables and fiber and, you know, have an orange, things like that, fruit and veg that's full of vitamin C, and the citrus bioflavonoids and, and the flavonoids that are wrapped up with the vitamin C in food, it's going to actually help it work better and get into your body. So I'm kind of a food first person, but if you want to, you know, to have a protocol based on the science, you could take, you know, a gram of vitamin C and spread it throughout the day with a supplement. And what about other supplements? There are various other supplements that people sell and say that, you know, you're going to yeah. take this thing and it's going to make your immune system um, better. What does the evidence say about that versus like being able to improve their overall diet and the things you were talking about yeah. before? I think there's two things we're thinking about here. The, the one, of, one is um, that we often have a reactive approach to it. So we don't think about our immune system going through our daily life get into winter, first virus hits us, and then we're like, oh, I've got such a terrible immune system. And then we take all the things that tell us they're going to make us better. I like to think about it in more of prevention, in that looking after your immune system so it can look after you is a 365-day-a-year job. And that's, you know, uh, what we should be doing every day, not just waiting till we get those symptoms and spending all the money, because there's always that kind of um, bias that we've bought this supplement, it must be doing something. And do any of us ever really know if it's shortened the duration or made the symptoms better? Because you would probably get better anyway over the course of a few days if it's, you know, a regular winter virus. You can find evidence for a lot of things. So 
um, elderberry. Uh, it's got uh, an antiviral compounds in it, and there's been studies done looking at, at that. Um, also contains vitamin C. Um, echinacea is quite highly studied. The challenge there is that there's many different types of the plant and different bits of the plant, and so it's hard to get a consensus on you know which extract from which specific type uh, is the one that's going to give you the best effect. And again, the science, you know, we're not talking about huge meta analyses where we're really have that convincing robust data it's going to be a mixture of small studies and you know things done on you know cell culture rather than in large populations of humans um you know other things like garlic you know we know that there's compounds in garlic that are really good for fighting off infections but whether that's going to move the needle when you get those symptoms um, and whether you want to be chewing up raw garlic or you just want to be having you know something really nourishing and delicious <laughs> I'd love to switch on then to, okay, let's say you're thinking about this and you'd like to be more healthy, have, you know, more quality years and a yeah. better quality over the next year yeah. rather than just like, hey, I've, I'm, I need to, you know, do this one thing. And I know you discussed this in your in your latest book about blueprint for, for strong immunity. And so I wanted to really touch into that. And I think the three areas I'd love to cover to get to like really practical advice for people listening and... I think you talk about nutrition, you mm -hmm. talk about stress, and you talk about sleep. And I just love yeah. to understand, like, what can you do where you feel there is really strong evidence that is really going to make a difference to this immune yeah. system that I think you've done a brilliant cell that, like, we really <laughs> need to look after for the long run if yeah. we want to stay healthy. Yeah, I think have that long game in your mind. You know, we are in the, you know live on average to 80 years old, but our health span is 60 years old, and that's a delta of 20 years. And it's really emerging that the immune system is the key element to closing that delta. What you're saying is that you might only have 60 sort of quality yeah. years, and then you're saying you get a 20 years when you're feeling quite sick, and yeah. you're saying the immune system you think is the most important thing for yeah. trying to make that a shorter period of time. Yeah, exactly. And the things that are going to help that are also the things that are going to help you get through winter um, in terms of the sort of more short term feeling well and less downtime. And to me, there's the, 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 the biggest piece of advice I can give to anyone in terms of diet is to follow a really anti-inflammatory diet pattern and stop hyper-focusing on superfoods. You know, if you eat five or six superfoods on repeat, that's not going to be as beneficial as a really diverse dietary pattern that's anti-inflammatory. And um, I often reference the Mediterranean diet only because it's the one that's perhaps the most studied and has the largest volume of evidence behind it. But um, it, it's bringing in all those elements. So a variety of fruit and veg, using really good fats like olive oil, um, you know, lean protein, um, oily fish, and fiber. So, you know, we've spoken about the gut microbes, but making sure those gut bugs are fed and happy right from the outset and then across the life course because that's not only going to be supporting your immune system, it's going to be minimizing that unwanted inflammation that's going to be sort of taking energy away from, you know, your ability to fight infections. It's um, going to be reducing the driving of those hallmarks of aging. It's really, really important, I think, that that the overall pattern of your diet is is considered rather than like, you know, we want to think of one or two superfoods, one or two supplements that we must take. At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.